Please note, this document has been translated from Standard to Post Lunar English for the reader's convenience. Some names may have been changed for enhanced understanding. The Federation was not a young organization. Built by the Firsts before they left for elsewhere, the Federation hosted all who wished to join. A single organization meant to provoke peace between every race in the galaxy. Its capital, the Citadel, is sat at the very center of the galaxy, using technology and Sagittarius A to warp space such that every species has 1.5 Earth areas for its own uses. And it has worked. It stood against the jaws of the Tyranids, the savagery of the Afraxi, and the hatred of the Daleks. It has accepted refugees from races long thought dead, salvation ships that have drifted through the void, their own worlds, cultures and civilizations, having died long before the first ever looked up to the stars, having rescued by the space dwelling Quarians. There are some things that no member race does, at least not openly. Not because it is outlawed, but because Sapiens as a whole seems to have an instinctive repulsion towards it. Cannibalism. The harming of children. One of these things Sapiens as a whole seemed to dislike was, until recently, the purposeful changing of the body. Now, as with all things, this comes on a spectrum. Legion, always the most foreign of the members, saw nothing wrong with adding extra mechanical parts to his drones, but seeing as Legion is one mind with many bodies, this was understandable. On the other side, the Folos loathed change, even transfusions, a practice where naturally replacing liquid, XE, blood, are taken from a healthy individual and given to one in need, are anathema to them. Were it not for the Federation, it is likely they would have declared war against Legion for this issue, but such a case is sadly common against Legion. That is until they met the humans. Coming from a class 6 planet, that was to be expected. Most species are from class 4 planets or lower, with the vast majority coming from classes 2 and 3, but class 1 and 4 planets are not unheard of. The previous high score was Legion, coming in at a technical class 6. Without Legion, however, Porsal, its home planet, comes in at a low 5. The human's home planet, Terra, is high 6, with some considering it a low 7. Some more extreme scientists have reasoned that the higher the classification of a planet, the more alien the resulting sapient will be to the Federation. Another oddity is in the human's FTL systems. With only a few exceptions, every other species develops their own unique FTL system at first, until they come into contact with a member, where they then either abandon their FTL outright, or in the event that a species had developed an FTL system that relies on infrastructure to function, they only use it in their own space, with perhaps a connection to their section of the Citadel, if the system allows. Even Legion has done this to some extent. While the ships are all equipped with the slip space engines, it still needs some interstellar infrastructure in order to control its drones effectively. Humanity isn't. It is not that their biology interacts negatively with slip space, like the Thargoids. It isn't even that they are paranoid of anything not designed by them, which would be understandable. Several species, the more warlike especially, have had the same issues. No, they simply prefer their own. Not only that, but humans also seem obsessed with figuring out exactly how even the clearly inferior systems function. Their ships can be seen wielding multiple systems all at once, in addition to the infrastructure based on relay system pulled from the Leviathans. But the thing that sets humanity apart from the rest of the members is their voracious hunger to modify their own bodies. The same human can have a Leviathan-sized body one and a half days, and a small compy-sized one the next, with no health complications to speak of. They change their bodies like others change clothes, and they are not solely cosmetic changes. The Popeyes once got in trouble for genetically engineering one of their members to be biologically better than they should have been. Most humans undergo similar, if only by the results, enhancements from a very young age. A standard, unenhanced human is nothing to fear. Despite their hazardous home, a standard human is weak, slow, and the skin can easily be torn by even the weakest weapons. They are on the galactic average in terms of general intelligence, their unparalleled wit and sharpness supporting their poor memories. The only thing that an unenhanced human is better at than the average sapient are endurance and survivability. A healthy, unenhanced human will survive, and in a large number of cases thrive in conditions that would kill any other sapient. The problem with this, however, is that no human is unenhanced. Even those who aren't obviously modified are above the galactic average in nearly everything except memory, and even then they are extremely close. And when a human is obviously modified, they can even beat some expertly designed machines with nothing else than their body. Lamias, 
which is the name given to humans who have modified themselves to have a serpentine lower body, can crush many metals. Some have been known to crack open civilian shutters with nothing but brute strength. Arachnes, which are humans with chitinous octopodal lower bodies, can excrete fibers that can outperform modern body armors on demand. That is in addition to nearly silent movement, and the ability to climb visibly slick surfaces. And that is not even taking into account the speed with which humanity can create these transformatives, as they call them. Within a few one and a half days of encountering Antarctica Prime, they had already developed hidden transformatives to allow for a non-obviously enhanced human to thrive within the below negative 138 degrees Celsius temperatures. End of part one of Dr. Witkakusa's paper on humanity.